The original spanning tree, known as 802.1D, has quite a few drawbacks in the modern network. Over time, there have been a few improvements to the original protocol, and a few new variants of spanning tree, not all of which are shown here. Cisco even had a few proprietary versions which only worked with other Cisco switches. There have also been vendor neutral versions that work on all switches, like RSTP. To be honest, these take a lot of Cisco's improvements like better timers, port rolls and other features and they make them standards. So RSTP is the vendor neutral improvement on spanning tree. Cisco's implementation of this is called per VLAN rapid spanning tree. This means that Cisco's enhanced version of RSTP is aware of VLANs, while the official version of RSTP is not. Another version of spanning tree called MSTP is the vendor neutral option that is VLAN aware. Okay, so what do I mean when I say VLAN aware or per VLAN? Well, traditionally, the spanning tree topology is the same for the entire switching domain. If a port is the root port, it's the root port for all VLANs. If a port is blocked, it is blocked for all VLANs. In the per VLAN model, there is a separate spanning tree instance for each VLAN. Take this topology for example. We have two VLANs, 10 and 20. We can configure different priorities, root bridges and link costs for each VLAN. This means that the switch selected to be the root bridge for VLAN 10 may be entirely different to the switch selected to be root bridge for VLAN 20. There are pros and cons to this approach, of course. In a traditional model, some links would still be blocked. These links would be then sitting there idle all the time, essentially being wasted. In our per VLAN model, a link may be blocked for VLAN 10, and a different link is blocked for VLAN 20. This means that we're utilizing all our links. On the other hand, the switch needs to maintain a separate instance for every VLAN, even if they have the same configuration. If you have a lot of VLANs, then your switch will have a lot of spanning tree processes. This puts more load on the switch's hardware. MST, that's multiple spanning tree, is a reasonable alternative in this case, but that's outside the scope of a CCNA level video. Let's see how this looks on a switch. First, we're creating our two VLANs, 10 and 20. We want this switch to be the root bridge for VLAN 10, but not for VLAN 20. This is done by changing the bridge priority as we saw in the last video. This time I'm going to show you a shortcut. We're going to run spanning tree VLAN 10 root primary. This is a macro or shortcut on Cisco switches that sets the bridge ID for us, so this switch will become the root. By specifying VLAN 10, this change will only happen for the VLAN 10 spanning tree instance. We can do the same for VLAN 20 using the secondary keyword. This will set a bridge priority that's a little worse than the current root bridge, but still better than other switches. So if the root bridge fails, this switch will be the next in line to take over. We can now take a look at the result with show spanning tree VLAN 10. This is the same as show spanning tree command we've been using. It's just limiting the output to VLAN 10 information only. We can indeed see that this is the root bridge for VLAN 10. Let's do the same for VLAN 20. You can see here that some other switch is the root bridge for VLAN 20. The local bridge priority is a little worse than the root bridge. Question 10 here is the big one I want you to think about. I have faced this question in the real world and it's likely that you will too. You will need to put in some additional research to find the answer. We have a two part lab today. In the first part, you need to implement RSCP and add general enhancements. In part two, someone has broken our network. You need to find the fault and repair it. We're now going to move on from spanning tree. Head over to the next video, which looks at bundling multiple links into a single ether channel.